Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I'm currently playing in Minecraft 1.6, ready to spotlight the update to Bibliocraft. If you guys didn't see my first Bibliocraft spotlight, you should probably go back and check it out, because it's a really cool mod that adds all kinds of decorative and cool stuff, but it actually adds a couple nifty little tools and useful things that you can go ahead and use in your world. So both looks good, but also has some really neat functionality, uh, which, you know, I'm pretty much a fan of. So a bunch of different updates since the last time I spotlighted this mod, and let's just jump right in and take a look at all the new things that Bibliocraft has added since the last spotlight. All right, you guys should remember the bookcases and the redstone books. Remember, you can go ahead and uh, put down a bookcase, get yourself some redstone dust. And if you have a redstone book in the bookcase, it's going to emit uh, some redstone dust. Cool, right? Uh, now, if you want, you can go ahead and pull that book out or uh, interact with the bookcase in any way you want. Pretty nifty, right? Now, the thing that changed about this mechanic, you might have noticed it. If you weren't paying attention, though, you might not have. If the book is placed on the bottom or right-hand corner, it's going to emit a redstone signal of about 15. Cool, the max signal. However, uh, if you take the book and place it in the top left corner, it's going to not even emit any redstone signal. Um, but if you put it in the second one, it emits a redstone signal of one. So basically, you've got 16 slots here, and the different position of the books in the bookshelves re uh, cause the different uh, signal strengths to come out. So you can basically go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to six, uh, 15 signal strength. Awesome, right? Now, what this can be specifically used for um, is to go ahead and use the comparators, which are part of uh, vanilla uh, Minecraft, or you can use some other mechanic, to uh, read the signal strength of the redstone coming out of the bookcases, and then you can uh, go ahead and create some really complex locks. So uh, one of the things Nucha has mentioned to me is that if you had a uh, three bookcases and you were trying to use comparators across them, you have a total of about 4,096 different combinations of uh, signal strength that you can come up with here. So again, depending on where you place the book in the bookshelf determines the signal strength of the redstone coming out of the bookshelf. Pretty cool. So you can use this for some really nifty and interesting lock combinations and, you know, simply decide like, you know, who can get into your secret base. Awesome. And while on the topic of uh, bookshelves, why don't I show you guys this nifty mechanic that was added. If we go over here and check out our enchanting table, we can see our max enchanting level is currently 28. But I've got some bookshelves sitting here. Cool. Let's go ahead and uh, open up this interface and throw a book in the bookcase. Now, ah, still 28. So what's this all about? Well, if you place, I'm going to put 7 in there for now, and we'll see that we're still at level 28. However, if I put an 8th book in the bookcase, we'll see now we have up to level 30. So for every 8 books that you place in your bookcase, you get the equivalent of 1 bookshelf's worth of additional modifiers for your enchanting table. So basically, because you can have 2 rows of 8, you can get uh, pretty much double the efficiency. It does cost you a little bit more books, but that's not that big a deal. It just allows for a little bit smaller and more compact design. Plus, it looks really cool. I mean, that, that. Mmm, I like that one. Definitely a very cool design of bookcases. And uh, that's pretty much the mechanic right there for enchantment tables. Eight books in a bookcase equals one bookshelf um, block. Nice. And seeing as I'm here at my enchanting table, why don't I show you guys a really awesome feature? Uh, remember, we've got an enchanted book. Knockback 2, ah, that's a terrible enchant. Let's go with, that's even worse, Bane of Arthropods. Come on, give me something cool. I want a good enchant for this one. None of these are nice. All right, sharpness three. That's not too bad. Remember the printing press? Oh yeah. These mechanics allow you to duplicate your enchanted books. Let me show you how. Simply get yourself one of those printing press chases. Remember, you could have used these, if you saw my last spotlight, to duplicate written books. Well, now you can duplicate enchanted books, but there's a little bit of balance around it, so don't get too excited. Go ahead and throw your uh, chase in the top left slot there, and place your enchanted book in this slot, okay? Now, if you're wearing your reading glasses, how's it going? Oh yeah. You can go ahead and look at this, and you can see uh, how many levels is required to go ahead and make a copy of this book. So you can see it's sharpness 3, and it requires 24 levels. I've seen it go as high as 31, but I wouldn't be surprised if it can go even higher. That's the deal. Go ahead and right-click with an empty hand uh, on the uh, bookshelf here. Sorry, that's sneak right-click, as a matter of fact. And you'll get this nifty guy, the enchanted plate. 
So you have to sneak right click on the enchanted book when you have the copier in there and you've got the enchanted plate. This guy can go into your printing press right there. Don't forget to put a little bit of ink on the pad. I've already got a bunch of ink on the pad up here. And uh, place yourself a book. Let's go with, I'm gonna put four there. Ta-da, four books, and you can see it's making a copy of Sharpness 3. Give it a few minutes here, and you'll all of a sudden have another copy of Sharpness 3. Now, once you take that book away, it's gonna make another copy for you. However, do note that this thing only has three operations that it can run. That's why I put four books there. You'll be able to see this pretty clearly in a second. Once you get the third book, it's gonna go ahead and uh, completely destroy that Sharpness 3 copier, and you've now got one, two, and, dum dum dum, three copies of Sharpness 3. So it does require some levels to go ahead and make those copies. Um, you have to put your levels into the little um, you know, printing press thing, but once you've got that, oh look, we've got 58 ink left, nice. Sharpness 3 times three. So you can take one um, enchanted book and turn it into three of the same kind. That is awesome. And of course, there's nothing stopping you from taking this enchanted book, getting yourself another chase, which isn't too bad of a recipe, placing it back there, and shift right-clicking on the book again to get yourself another enchanted plate. And we can do it all again. Now let's talk about some of the new decorative stuff that's been added. I want to show you guys tables. Tables are really neat. By the way, if uh, there's a bunch of different add-on mods for Bibliocraft where you can use some of the other woods that are available, like forestry woods and biomes of plenty woods, so definitely keep an eye out for those. Um, I don't have a copy of those mods in 1.6 just yet, but you know that they're available. Um, you can use those different woods for a lot of the different wooden materials available in Bibliocraft. But for now, I'm going to show you oak tables, and uh, sure, why not? I'll show you the birch ones as well. There's all kinds of different wood up there. Now, tables are really cool. You can simply place them in the world. So let's find a nice spot to place down a table. How about back here behind my computer? Ta-da! Now, on this uh, block here, you can put pretty much any item that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and find something really cool to place on this table. I think an apple will do. Simply right click, and it'll lay the item down. Nice, right? Now, there's another tool I want to show you guys, uh, but for now I'm going to do this with the tape measure. Simply right click on the side of the block and you can rotate the item as it sits on the block. Pretty cool, right? You can get it to sit on there, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. Nice! As you can see, you can put your pickaxe on, so you can put items, but you can also put blocks. Not a big deal. Pretty much whatever you want. Cool. And you can rotate it on the table as shown. And if you shift click with an empty hand, you'll have access to the GUI or the GUI, and you can kind of put whatever items you want in there like so, and it'll kind of show up. Nice. Now the really cool part about this is you can place tables next to each other, and the legs of the table will automatically adjust to uh, fit the size of the table that you're making. I don't know if there's a limit to this. I've uh, made some pretty big tables just like testing and playing with this mod, and I mean, so far it's pretty nice looking. That is cool, right? So you can really like make some nice looking tables, put all kinds of cool stuff on it, and if you want, you can even put a lamp. Let's take a look at lamps. Lamps are pretty nice. These guys right here, fancy lamps. Uh, simply craft some gold, some glowstone, and some glass, and you'll get yourself a fancy lamp. You can go ahead and change the color of it by just applying some dye. And you can easily change uh, you know, any color into any other color by just applying the dye to it. So if you've already got a cyan hood and you want to turn it into a green hood, not a big deal. All right, uh, right clicking on the table, we'll place it down like an item, okay? So let's go ahead and make it dark out just so we can see the effect. Ooh, fancy. So it does emit light when it's in the item form, but um, if you want it to be larger, you can shift right click or just place it on any other block and it'll look like that. Shift right click um, causes it to go down as if it were being placed on any other block. So instead of it going like in the table's GUI, it's kind of placed on top of the table, see? So if we have the fancy light on the GUI, give it off light. Uh, but if we shift right click it, then it's no longer in the table's GUI. And you can see here that, uh, you know, we can open it up and there's no item in there. Right clicking doesn't take it off either. So you can use these either in the world or on your tables to emit light. And they look really awesome. Do note there's another kind of lantern, uh, the golden lantern, this guy, just a little bit of gold and a torch and some glowstone. And it's pretty much the same thing, but just a different uh, mechanic. So we can see here, well, that's probably not what I wanted to do. Let's just put one there. There we go. Looking pretty slick, right? 
Uh, and of course, if you want, you can uh, shift right click or just place them anywhere in the world. These things would look really nice, by the way, hanging off like fence posts or something like that. Now let's take a look at another new item called a cookie jar. <laughs> this thing is pretty cool. Uh, it's simply an inventory and you can kind of place anything you want in here. Uh, it's got a GUI here, you can kind of place your items in. And anything that's placed in there will render as a cookie. So it looks like a cookie inside the jar, even though you can really put it pretty much put anything in there. The cool thing about the cookie jar is you can catch people who are stealing things from it. Simply apply a redstone signal. Anytime you open the GUI, you can see redstone signal gets emitted. It kind of pulses it once anytime anybody opens up the GUI. It doesn't stay uh, on while they have the inventory open. It just does one single pulse. Pretty awesome, right? There's another new item available to you called the clipboard. This is really a pretty handy tool that I think a lot of people will like. It's basically a to-do list. Simply right click and you've got multiple pages here. You can see you can flip through. Uh, you can go up and hit, put up a task list here. So we're gonna call um, to-do list direwolf20. Nice. And you can go ahead and put in things like uh, demo bibliocraft. And then uh, right here we'll say record new LP episode. Nice. And you can see, et cetera, et cetera. You can kind of come up with whatever tasks you want. Build awesome thing. And once you've uh, closed out the to-do list, you can mouse over it and see the, um, the heading of the most recent page you had opened. So if you right-click it and have a second page here, more stuff, and close out, you'll see that it shows more stuff. And it'll remember what page you were on every time you open it. And uh, it'll also kind of give the name of whatever uh, you last closed. So... It was on page two when I last closed it. It's now showing more stuff. Um, finally, you can see the little check marks here. You can go ahead and click off once you've completed something or click again to put a red X. And a third click will remove the X. So you can just change it whatever you want. So I can be like, oh yeah, I'm almost done with this. Cool. And of course, as you should expect, uh, the clipboard will work on the oak desk or any other kind of desk. So you can see here you've got a clipboard on it. When you right click, you'll see your to-do list and you can change pages, walk away. And when you come back, it'll be on the same page that it was on before. And uh, of course, you can also steal it back and it'll be on the same page. So it remembers the page it had open last time you accessed it. Nice. There we go. So you guys are familiar with carpets, which are a new addition to Minecraft 1.6. Well, guess what? You can place those carpets on any table, and it becomes a tablecloth. Sweet. Renders really nicely, even has it hanging off the side just a little bit, so it looks really sharp. And of course, you can place this on uh, all your tables that you want here, and it looks great. And you can even still put items on top of the tablecloth. That's cool. Um, if you want to remove the tablecloth, you're going to want to go ahead and use one of the new items from the Bibliocraft mod. Uh, let's take a look here at this nifty guy, the screw gun. This is going to become basically the Bibliocraft version of the wrench. It's going to be the tool used for stuff. So you just right click on the top of the table to remove it. You can also use this guy to rotate your stuff, okay, instead of using the tape measure. Just click on the one side of the block that makes sense to rotate it. Nice. There's a new item called the lock and key. For now, it's creative mode only. I'm not sure if he plans to add a crafting recipe to it, but you can see even in the tooltip, creative mode only. Basically, this is meant for creative maps where you want to uh, be able to like do something cool like this. You can go ahead and apply the lock to that block. Now, um, it cannot be broken. So if we take a look at this, you'll see that it's impossible to break. Also, the uh, bookshelf can only be accessed by the user who uh, locked it. So since I'm the one who locked it, it's going to go ahead and allow me to access it. Simply go ahead and right click again to unlock it. Again, that's creative mode only, and it's kind of intended for those who are building creative maps and doing cool stuff with the mod. Uh, not sure if it'll be getting a crafting recipe in the future, but it's a pretty neat mechanic. And the final new or changed item in this mod is the tape measure. You guys remember you can use the tape measure to go ahead and record the distance between two blocks by clicking on them. Now, whenever you place uh, the first right click, it's going to place down a marker block here. And you'll see a uh, distance of how far away you are. So as you walk away from it, you'll see how far away you are. It's not the block you're looking at that distance, but it's how far you are from the block that you clicked on. So I'm 12 meters away. And if I get closer, we can kind of see like now I'm like right on top of it. Cool. I like it.
So you can go ahead and check that out. Now, uh, just like normal, you can go ahead and right click on a block and it'll tell you how far away you are in both the north, south, and east, west direction. And it removes the marker as soon as you right click. If you shift right click, you can switch to absolute measurement mode and you can go ahead and right click and you can see that we're now uh, eight blocks away from where the marker was. Pretty neat. Final additions and changes were uh, custom language support. Uh, if you guys have any interest in helping Nuchaz out with uh, some of the language support, you can go ahead and check out his uh, forum post for details on how to do that. Um, he's made a couple bug fixes, standard stuff. And finally, there's a config option available in the uh, configurations. Sometimes uh, some mods, when you place their armor or items on book stands or uh, on armor stands, were causing crashes upon loading the world. Um, it was pretty rare, and it was more often than not the uh, other mod that was causing the problem. But he wanted to make sure that he had a way around that. So he added a config option that you can turn on that will disable the rendering of all blocks. So none of the blocks in his mod will render if you turn on this config option, which will allow you to get into the world with without the crash, remove whatever problem there was, and then go ahead and turn that config option off. So I just wanted to mention that to you guys. It was a pretty neat config option that he added. Wanted you to be aware. And with that, I think we're pretty much ready to wrap up the Mod Spotlight update on Bibliocraft. Lots of cool new additions and changes. I really like the tablecloths. Don't ask me why, I just think they look awesome. Um, but there's a whole bunch of cool changes as you can see. The other thing that I'm really excited about, I really did not know about this awesome enchanted book duplication thing. I think that's awesome. I'm sure some of the more expensive enchants and some of the better enchants cost a lot of levels to, to duplicate, but it's definitely worth it. Um, so cool. All right, guys, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the spotlight. As always, the um, description of this video will contain a link to the forum post. Um, I believe the current version is 1.4. Definitely worth a download and playing with. And as uh, as it was in the past, it will be included in the Direwolf20 uh, FTB mod pack. So I think it's already in there for version 1.5. And when the 1.6 FTB pack does get updated, this will definitely be in there. All right, guys, take it easy.